I woke up 37 days ago, lying on what appeared to be my living room floor, surrounded by DVDs of The Dick Cavett Show and Star Trek action figures. Although I could recognize the identities of the material that surrounded me, I had no conscious memories or awareness of my own identity. After exploring my dwelling and reviewing the vast wealth of textual material and camera and television equipment that I found, I felt a sense of purpose that gave me confidence to exit the residence and explore my surroundings further, despite continuing to have no awareness of who I actually was. I explored my neighborhood for what felt like hours, finding no traces of other human beings. I found this quite unusual, seeing as all the books and media in my home referred to other human beings, indeed an entire civilization and social system riddled with controversy and complexity beyond my comprehension. Surely these other people had to be real in some sense, but where did they or others like them go? Suddenly I remembered that I had not examined the computer inside my residence, and something told me that it held a key of sorts that could unlock possible explanations. I returned home and soon discovered that this thing, this thing known as the internet, was still functioning. This gave me hope that I was, perhaps, not completely alone, and that there may be others I could contact far beyond the reaches of my pedestrian locomotion. I learned that the internet first began with point-to-point -point communication, point -point connection, connection between, between, between two nodes computers, or endpoints, and eventually into packet switching. and terminals. A digital networking communication This framework size then expanded to called packets that groups all transmitted and features delivery of regardless of content type data structure into suitable sequences Most of notably, the ARPANET over a shared network. in a particular led to the development networking. of protocols for where multiple separate networks could be joined together into a network of networks. The first message on the ARPANET was sent by UCLA student programmer Charlie Klein at 10.30 p.m. on the 29th of October, 1969. This was not even a year and a half after the first broadcast of The Dick Cavett Show, where the famed talk show host had as his first guest engineer-designer-futurist Buckminster Fuller. The two discussed how politicians would eventually become obsolete through technological advances. Upon unearthing this profound coincidence, I determined that it was my fate, as much as my duty, to produce a talk show and broadcast it through the internet, despite the uncertainty that there was anyone around for me to talk to. I found myself with no recourse other than producing a pantomime of how such a show might be composed, with guests formed purely out of my own imagination, caricatures of survivors caught in the emotional turmoil that accompanies post-catastrophic realities Obviously, we've come to a time where we must return, in many senses, to point-to-point -to -point communication. And we are eager to connect with your mainframe. We would love to hear your answer, and potentially disagree with it. This is Kiki North, through the lens of Melvin Sheffield, signing off. And you know where to find us.